Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna get significantly better at Modern Warfare 2. While it is a slight change of pace, it feels very easy to adjust to. This will help you win more fights, fix your KD, and level much faster by simply doing better in your matches. The first thing I would recommend taking a look at before we get into the gameplay is your settings. I'm not gonna focus on them too heavily in this video as I have a few videos on my channel that'll help you. It'll help you get better SFPS while removing the blur and adding color to the game. I'll help you win more gunfights as I show you how to remove some of that visual recoil on the clutter on screen. And don't worry, I'll have those links available in the description in case you'd like to take a look at them. Alright guys, so the first thing I would recommend doing here is slow down and play smarter. The time to kill is much faster in this game. The ARs are averaging 2 to 300 millisecond time to kill while stronger ARs are averaging closer to 150 milliseconds. You can still play aggressive, just play smart instead of recklessly. Don't try and tack sprint as often, and try to pre-aim and ADS more frequently. Check your corners and peak angles. The game rewards camping, so you're going to see tons of it, and you're going to have to be prepared for it. Turn off your auto tack sprint, because you have a slower sprint to fire time than regular sprinting. You also make more noise. Drop shotting was nerfed, but it is viable. Bunny hopping was nerfed, but it is viable. The thing is, after your first jump, you have no additional bounce or momentum, and that's what's going to stop you at that point. Now, the slide canceling, that's gone. You can't cancel sliding at all anymore, and you cannot shoot while sliding. So those are going to be huge nerfs to sliding. You can dolphin dive, but it's kind of useless as well. If you get caught dolphin diving out in the open and sliding out in the open, chances are a sniper's going to see and pop your head off. Now, reload canceling, that was nerfed. You can still cancel in, in the very beginning, but once you really start that animation, you're stuck with it. At that point, you're better off weapon swapping. The other thing here that a lot of people forget about is the minimap and the compass. I know I was guilty of that for a while. Not in this game, but back in the older CODs. So you're gonna, you can shoot down UAVs and counter UAVs. They only take a few shots depending on the gun. I know they were harder to shoot down in some of the previous CODs as well. The other big thing here that I don't think people tend to think about is the audio in this game. There are tons of audio cues. The footstep audio might have been nerfed, but that's about it. Use a headset. That's the best thing I can say. When it comes to audio in this game, I really recommend using a headset because if you're not, you're really losing out on that directional audio and where those players are going to be located. It's going to help win more gunfights. And speaking of winning gunfights, one of the big things there is your centering. What I mean by centering is essentially when you're going to, when you're entering a building, you want to be centered where you think the enemy is going to be in the doorway. You go through that building, maybe someone's going to be in that left corner. Center to that. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the crosshair. Keep your crosshair on where you're looking. It's going to be, it's a little hard. It's easier said than done, really. But once you start thinking about it, you're going to get into the groove and you're going to stop thinking and just start doing. And that's really the best thing I can say there. Just focus as much as you can on your centering and where you're looking at all times. Because if you're already centered, that's less downtime you're going to have before you can start that engagement. Meaning you're going to have a better chance of winning that fight. Now you can also disable those moving crosshairs in the settings. I have a video for that as well. If that's something you're interested in, I'll post that down in the link down in the description. The other thing I would recommend doing is hip fire while aiming down sight instead of aiming down sight first. I'm very guilty of ADSing before I shoot. Just shoot and then ADS. Now aim higher. Don't aim too high because there's a lot of flinch in this game. If you if you're aiming at somebody's head and they react, chances are you're going to flinch and shoot above and miss some shots. If you aim at their upper chest, their upper torso, and you get hit, you're going to flinch into their head. Higher chances of landing that headshot and that hand shot, that headshot significantly destroys that time to kill, making it much quicker. Now, you do have your lethals. There's two big ones here I'd recommend, which is your drill charge and your thermite. So your tacticals are going to be important as well. Your flash grenades and your snapshot grenades right now are very strong. The flash grenades are going to be great for when you're trying to breach a room or even just trying to stun somebody so you can move into a better position. And your snapshot grenades are fantastic for a whole different reason. Now, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but you can shoot through a lot of the walls in this game. And what the snapshot grenade does is it 
highlights an enemy within the blast radius. So you throw out a snapshot, let's say three or four enemies are there, they all get lit up, you see them through the wall. Now you can shoot through that wall to kill them. It's just going to lead to some funny death comms and hopefully some easy kills for you. Maybe knock out a few of those campers. And now we have your attachments. So your attachments are going to be very different, I feel like, compared to previous Call of Duty games. They have a lot more negatives than they used to, and you really have to put thought into every attachment you, you essentially set up. So if you run 5 out of 5 attachments, that might actually not necessarily be better than a gun with no attachments or a gun with, let's say, 3 out of 5 attachments. And the reason for that is because most attachments will have a lot of negatives like longer or slower ADS speed, your sprint to fire speed will be lower, increased recoil, that kind of stuff. So if you take a look here at this barrel, for instance, ADS speed lowers and your hip recoil lowers. Hip recoil control, that's not important, but your ADS speed is important. If you have five attachments or four attachments that lower your ADS speed, you're going to lose a lot of your gunfights where you need, a, need that time to ADS because somebody might have an SMG or somebody might hip fire you. You won't land the hip fire shots because you have that hip fire negative. You won't be able to ADS in time because you have too many negatives on it. So you really have to find the play style that you're going for and build into that play style. Let's say you want a little bit more movement. Well, one of the nice things with movement is it'll actually make you a lot harder to hit because faster strafe speed and things like that. So that's going to be one of the major things you're going to want to keep in mind is just the negatives, the positives, and how different the build really is in this one compared to previous CODs. The one big thing here is like, let's say for instance, the RF crown. It gives you horizontal and vertical recoil. That's great. Again, it lowers your ADS speed. That ADS speed is going to impact you significantly so that's just something you're going to want to keep in mind but then beyond that you have your perk packages your perk packages are very very different as well so i actually have a few recommendations here as you can see i've just been messing around with overkill that's not necessarily what i'm recommending so my big recommendations are going to be scavenger and bomb squad or scavenger and tracker Tracker, it'll highlight the enemy footsteps so it's easier to find the enemy players as they're running away from you. Bomb Squad, it's going to reduce the damage that you take from non kill streak explosives. So it's just going to make it a lot easier. Let's say you're running over a proximity mine or somebody hits you with that drill charge, you're not going to die. And then we're going to head over here to the bonus perks. So the bonus perks, I think they did a really good job with. The Fast Hands is my personal favorite, it allows you to reload quicker. And in a game like this, the reload time is very, very slow because they wanted to slow down the pacing of the entire game, essentially. So that's going to be one major thing to keep in mind is with that slower reload time, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to reload cancel because they got rid of reload canceling. But you can swap weapons faster, and this is going to help you go even faster. So if you're in a situation where you're low on bolts instead of reloading, weapon swap kill them with your sidearm. It won't be a problem because you're going to have fast hands on. Or if you're in a situation where you do have a little bit extra time, then you can pull off that faster reload. Then the other one here in my in my opinion is going to be the second really big one. It's going to be hardline. It reduces your kill streak cost by 1 kill and that's massive. It also reduces the score streak cost by 125. So depending on the mode and what you're playing, it'll, you know, work for that mode. But that'll allow you to, let's say, call in more UAVs or more counter UAVs. Instead of a UAV saying, let's say, four kills, the UAV will take three kills. Then you have your ultimate perk here. So your ultimate perk, I personally run Ghost because I'm finding, with the way everyone's playing right now, and I'm playing a lot of Ground War, there's a lot of UAVs up, there's a lot of counter UAVs up, and everybody seems to be camping. So in my opinion, Ghost is allowing me to move around without getting seen, allowing me to push the flank, push the sides, and reposition so that I can take off people on the head glitches and overall just not get caught out all the time. The other big one is going to be Quick Fix. I think this is going to be huge when shipment comes out. The downside is with how fast the time to kill is, Quick Fix is going to be a little 
more niche in my opinion, but Quick Fix helps significantly because your time to heal in this game is a lot slower than previous Call of Duties, so that just kind of makes up for it. Then High Alert. This is my personal favorite. I just don't use it as frequently because, again, the time to kill being so fast. The high alert will essentially give you a pulse on the side of your screen, depending on where you're being seen from. Just, you know, allowing you to have a visual cue so you can try and quick turn around, maybe snap to the player and kill him. It's really useful when you're running down, you know, a large map and you have three different snipers. You know, you know, see someone looking at you, you quick dive and hide. Problem solved. All right, so that's going to be the perk packages. Now we have your field upgrades. Again, another thing I think they did very different. For the most part, you know, we know what a field upgrade is, but I don't think we were ever able to use two different field upgrades in one match. So you can see here, you actually have two options. When you hit max level, you get to choose two. And when you're in game, you actually get to pick which one you want to use at that time. So I've been running portable radar and munitions box just because it's been helping me in ground war to get more kills because I'm trying to farm my weapon XP and my camos. But honestly, I would recommend Dead Silence and the Munitions Box, or maybe Dead Silence and the Portable Radar, depending on your playstyle. But Dead Silence is going to be huge because that's going to allow you to push through the map without being heard, and with everybody camping in corners on 6v6 and everybody playing very slow-paced, they're going to be able to hear you a lot easier. But with Dead Silence, they're not going to have that opportunity, so that's going to be a massive, massive field upgrade in my opinion. Alright, so let me know how these tips work out for you. This was a little bit of a different video than what I'm used to doing. I, w I do plan on doing a lot more of this style in the future, so definitely stay tuned. And if you have any constructive criticism, constructive criticism, and if you have any constructive criticism for me, that would definitely help. I, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm doing everything I can to make the best videos for you guys, so it's really about what you guys are going to find helpful and what's going to benefit you. That's what I really want to do. So let me know again in the comments section below if there's anything I can do better, anything specific you would like to see, you know, all that good stuff. All right, guys, I appreciate you all for stopping by. Thank you so much. And you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon.